Hello everyone, I am Dr. Maria Espinola and I am a clinical psychologist. In this channel, I share free wellness tips in English and Spanish. Today, I am going to speak about how to decrease your anger using the DVT skill, opposite action. So first, I am going to give you an example. Let's say that you were supposed to complete a project with Nick, who is a coworker or a classmate and Nick didn't do his part of the project and he said he won't be able to do it today. So the project is due tomorrow and you're now responsible for finishing your part and his part. So you're very angry at Nick for not doing what he said he was going to do. In a situation like this, I ask patients to first identify and rate the emotions they are experiencing. In this case, it will be anger. And let's say that in a scale from zero to 10, you are at a seven in anger. What we're going to do next is to use the skill opposite action, which comes from dialectical behavior therapy or DVT. And I will add more information in the description. When using this skill, we need to check the facts. So you want to ask yourself, does it make sense to feel anger? In this case, let's say that it does, that Nick had a clear responsibility to complete half of the project and he had made a commitment to do it and then he failed to do so because he forgot about it and he already said he won't, he won't be able to complete it. Now, the next step is to ask yourself, is it effective? Is it helpful to feel this angry right now? So remember that the project is due tomorrow. So being very angry won't help you finish it. And it can actually impair your ability to finish the project, right? Because when we get very angry, we don't come up with the best ideas. We come up with ideas, but they tend to be regrettable ones and experiencing intense emotions can impair our ability to think clearly. So this therapeutic approach is very much about what is the most effective thing to do, not what is fair or unfair, what is good or bad. It is just about what will be helpful and what won't be helpful. In this case, the most helpful thing we can do is to lower the intensity of the anger we are experiencing so we can get the project done. That doesn't mean that we can't advocate for ourselves afterwards. A few days later, you can have a conversation with Nick about what took place. You can choose to report his actions to your employer, your teacher, your professor. You can choose to not do projects with Nick anymore, or to not trust him anymore. But that will be something that you can do after submitting the project. Now, the most effective thing to do will be to do the opposite of what you're thinking about doing. Since you're angry, you might feel like starting an argument with Nick, yelling at him, insulting him. The opposite of that will be to say something nice to him or to avoid him completely. Now, let's talk about a different example. This time the emotion won't be justified. So let's say that I have an appointment at 9 a.m. with my doctor and I get there late. Even though I was told to get there at 8.45, I made it there at 9.15, so 30 minutes late. Now, the person at the front desk is talking on the phone and not speaking to me. So I am getting concerned about not being able to see my doctor and I start getting angry at the receptionist because he's not paying attention to me. Now, is the anger justified? In this case, no, it is not. Because I was told to get there on time and I didn't. So I am responsible for the consequences of my actions and I have to accept them. And getting angry will not be effective either. Chances are, if I act in an angry manner, the receptionist will be less likely to help me. At this point, 
the most effective thing to do would be to reduce my anger. And I can do that by using the opposite action skill. I can challenge the judgments and assumptions I am making. For example, it is common for people to personalize events. That means making everything about ourselves. In this case, I could personalize the situation by thinking that the receptionist is not paying attention to me in purpose because he doesn't like me. So I have to identify and challenge this type of interpretations and assumptions. I also might assume that having to wait to see the doctor or having to reschedule will be catastrophic when it wouldn't be. So it will be helpful to imagine the catastrophe actually occurring and imagining coping well with a catastrophe. Coping well could be simply calming down and accepting seeing the doctor on a different day or asking the receptionist if I could see a different provider or make the decision to go to the emergency room if I am really having an emergency. Okay, I hope you find these techniques helpful. If after practicing these techniques, you feel that your emotions are still very intense, you can try practicing grounding skills or crisis survival skills. And I have videos on those options. Also, make sure you subscribe so you can get access to more free wellness tips.